as many times as I can. Share with me, because um, you last time, let's recap for people, last time you came here, you've got a reason you came here and you sort of gave a couple of reasons as to why you come and I'll do the same. So what, what's your reason for coming here? Do you mind clapping someone? Alright, thank you. Sink your audio. My reason for coming here, um, I think there's a few reasons actually. The first mm. reason is that um, I think there's obviously a really bad press from an Islamic perspective. There's the very bad Islam press of Islam. So what I've come here to do is to sort of uh, undo a lot of that and, um, and to actually give people an education mm -hmm. as to what Islam is about, truly. Without mm -hmm. sugarcoating it, without lying about it, um, and without watering it down, giving you the actual Islamic opinion on things and, and giving people, like, seriously, genuinely, the narrative mm. that we believe is the complete worldview. We believe, we believe that the Islamic worldview is the complete worldview. So from that angle that I come here just to express that, let people have an education of that, mm. understanding of that more like, and then they can make a decision as to how they want to have an interaction with Islam. Whether they want to embrace Islam, become Muslim, whether they want to remain as whatever they are, mm. but now they've understood what Islam is, or anything else really. Cool. Um, are, are, are you a person who's got a either absolute or very high certainty that what you believe is true? Or are you sort of more open to science or other things changing your mind? Okay, so the concept of truth, I believe in objectivism or I believe in objective reality. So I do believe that Islam as a world, um, as a world system really mm. is the truth. Within Islam there are things that like different jurisprudential opinions, yeah. which I can't be too sure about. Sure. So, so there are different opinions within Islam, I can't be too sure. But the idea of Islam in and of itself, I am completely sure about that, completely confident about it. So, yeah. And Not from a philosophical point of view, I guess, just from an internal certainty. Because you obviously, you've, you've studied some philosophy from what I hear when you talk, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, proffer that as a, as a philosophical point, would you? That you've got absolute certainty. Well, to be honest with you, it depends on how you define philosophy, right? Because philosophy, for me, mm -hmm. are competing ideas of how to understand the world. Yeah. Right? So I would say that you could posit this as a philosophical standpoint. Mm. I personally believe that Islam can be arrived at um, if you basically do a kind of deduction. So. Depending upon the deduction you do, you arrive at certain points. But well, you've got to do induction to get there. It's not, it's not automatically yeah, deductive, otherwise we'd all believe it, wouldn't indeed, we? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, induction and deduct deduction work together. Yeah? Sure. So, I, I say, my point is that actually there is a rationale to Islam. And you could even call it a philosophical rationale. I'm not saying that Islam is philosophy. Islam is not philosophy, right? But I'm saying that there is a deductive, logical rationale that people use mm -hmm. to get what can arrive at the Islamic um, answer, as the, or Islam as the true answer. Cool. All right. Let me ask you something that I've had trouble getting a good answer, and hopefully you can give me some kind of an answer. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's about the universe type of thing. So. You believe, I'll summarize and tell me if I've got your position correct, because obviously I want to make sure I don't straw man your position. You believe that God is omniscient, all-powerful, um, eternal, infinite, and created the universe from nothing. Your version of nothing is absolute nothing. In other words, the absence of everything or anything. Uh, and then further, this creation is in every way completely separate from and couldn't be part of God. Would that be accurate? That's true. There's two things I'll put to it. Mm -hmm. um, Allah refers to himself as Badia Samawati wal In the Quran, from a Quranic perspective, Badia, yeah. I mean, he created it from literally from nothing. Yeah? Yeah. And that Allah was in nothing, was there was a time. But one of his attributes is that he's al khalaq which means that he is constantly creating. So, so long as Allah has, and he has always existed, he's always been creating. Yeah, so his uh, being a creator means that he always creates. What does he create other than the universe? So things within the universe, for example, things that we can't see within the universe, etc. So would that not be where he created the universe initially, or are you saying yeah. that he does additional things? No, is no, it not yeah, all exactly. at, the, at the moment of creation, or is there additional things he's doing? Exactly, that's a good point. So we don't believe that the universe was the first thing that God created. Oh, okay. What, what, what do you think is the first thing? The, so there's a difference of opinion from an Islamic perspective mm -hmm. as to what, um, what was the first thing that God created, and yeah. this can be found in some of the, the works of the Islamic uh, exegetes and scholars. Some say it was the pen, some say, um, some say it was the, uh, the tablet. 
which are basically... This okay, tablet. these are material things, I'm guessing, is it? They're material things which can't be comprehended by us. We can only understand a tablet from what we know as a tablet now, yeah? So if I get you a tablet, like a stone tablet, so okay, what's that? It's a tablet, right? Yeah. But from the Islamic perspective, it is literally a, a place where everything that, um, that is, everything is entrenched or codified of what was going to be in the future. So this is prior to the universe? Prior to the universe. So the things that existed before the universe existed. Now, where did these things exist? In some other universe or where, where did these things you're talking so about So that's a good question and to be honest with you, from an Islamic perspective, we don't believe in necessarily a one universe. Ah, okay. We don't believe in one universe. Right. So, and my, my evidence for that is that mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God says in the Quran in many different places, for example, chapter 67, in the first one to five verses, and mm. chapter number 39 as well, so the soft, no, so 38 and 39. I'll take your word for it, I don't have it with me. He says yeah. that Allah created the sama' dunya bi masabih. Uh, so, so he created the, the heavens, mm -hmm. of the world, the heavens, with stars. So, and he created seven. Seven heavens. Seven heavens. So in other words, yes. he, this can be interpreted as, and this is what I go with, that Allah created seven universes, or seven uh, universes that are si similar to the universe that we live in. Okay, you'd probably be at odds with some Muslims, I'm guessing, who wouldn't kind of have no, that no, interpretation. No, 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 most would say that. Would they? Yeah, most people would say that. Because I've scholars, never heard another Muslim say that there's most, seven no, no, most universes. Scholars, most scholars would say that. Because from, just clearly from uh, exegesis perspective, mm. Because it says some uh, that they're one of the uh, another that they're overlapping each other. So these universes, um, the universe that we live in is Sama' al-Dunya or Sama' al which is the first heaven. How do we know that? Because the Quran says that we have certainly adorned the heavenly um, uni the, the, where we live, Sama' al-Dunya, the heavenly sky, with stars. So everything we see where, where, where stars are present is the universe. Yeah. yeah. So we the seven of uh, you Yeah, universes. I guess I'm questioning why you would you would equate heavens with universe. The word sama in, in Arabic means sky. Yeah. So right? why would so, okay? Why would you equate sky with universe? Well, the word universe. I mean, think about whether it's a very big difference, is. isn't it? Or do you not think not so? Necessarily. No, no, no. So these words are just these are syntactical le lexical phrases mm. that we're using. Yeah. But what we know is that from an, from an Arabic perspective, a sama is what is above. Yeah. So everything that is above us that contains stars is what we would consider the first heaven. And that includes galaxies and other yeah, things that they yeah, wouldn't yeah. have known about at the time and isn't talked about in the Quran. Like galaxies? Yeah, they wouldn't have talked about that in the Quran. Because well, I mean, we didn't even know that prior to, I think it's Einstein, bit before, was it he Einstein or Hubble? They all yeah. thought it was a static universe and we couldn't see outside our, our galaxy. Well, I'll tell you so, what it says in the Quran, actually. It's an interesting question. It says, فَلَا أُخْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِعَ النُّجُومِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَصَبٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عظيم. It says in chapter number 56 of the Quran that Allah makes an oath with the place, not only the stars, because he makes an uh, oath with the stars, but he says, uh, in chapter number 54, he makes an oath with the stars in chapter 54 verse 1. But in this chapter, in chapter number 56 of the Quran, in Surah sort of al he says that, فَلَا أُخْسُمُ بِمَوَاقِعَ النُّجُومِ He says that, certainly I make an oath with the placement of the stars. Not the stars, but the placement of the stars. Okay. So, I'm not saying that it talks about galaxies or whatever, but it talks about that, because in the same verse it says, وَإِنَّ هُلَا قَسَبُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمُ and certainly it's an oath, if you knew, it's a massive oath. In other words, the, not only is the, uh, the fact that there are stars in the universe an, an amazing thing, but according to the Quran, the, the placement of those stars is also uh, an amazing thing. Right, but we know, nat we know naturalistically how they go. I think we'll go down, that'll go down a yeah, different yeah. path. Let's get back to the universe itself. No, no, no. You know, the, the, so explain to me, because I've got a, I thought a bit about this, so the explanation doesn't seem fully coherent to me. Which the, the, the creation from ex nihilo, and also that the creation is in every way separate from Allah. Um, so, okay. so, let's do the last part first. If you agree that Allah was all there was prior, is eternal, infinite, all powerful, etc., uh, He created the universe, correct? Yeah. Um, and you say created from nothing. How can you then say you that, that he... there were things there before the universe. Yeah, did, so did he create the universe from those things? What I want to understand is how, what did he create the universe from? If, it, if not from himself in some way. In other words, the only coherent explanation appears to be that this universe yeah. is in some way from him as source. I see your point. Okay, I, this is quite um, what you would call in logic a false analogy. And I'll tell you why you're making this false analogy. Go ahead. As we were saying before, uh, and it's the same one another person that I was debating made. It's a, it's a false analogy for the following reason. Okay. Yeah? Basically, 
uh, we have to understand that we as human beings in the realm that we're living in are we are basically constrained by our five senses and our experiences yeah we have obviously laws of physics that we are dictated by in this universe mm -hmm. if we go above and beyond the universe we can't we cannot take for granted that the laws of the universe or those universes are going to be the same as the laws of this universe or if there is a universe outside or even if we say if we come outside of the, the realm of the universe we cannot say generally speaking that the laws outside are the same as they are inside yeah but i'm not claiming that so you're going to a different point no i think you are claiming that let me tell you why i think you're okay. claiming that because you said that you basically said that uh, God would have to make something from himself. That is based on your induction or your experience in this world that something must be made from something. Okay, but what I'm saying is that outside of the universe, you have two things which you have no knowledge of. One of them is we're saying, if we take for granted that God exists, is God. And the second thing is that, that outside of the universe space, yeah? So you cannot make that false uh, analogy and say that basically what exists within the universe must also have the same effect outside the universe. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Listen again. Go on. I'm saying if, if God is all powerful and was, it was all there was, you agree that there was nothing else. So prior to the universe, apart from these other things that you've said, like the tablet and so forth. So God created the tablet, God created the... Uh, he created lots well, of things. the question would still be the same for them. Where did, the, where did that, the stuff of this tablet creation or the universe come from, if not from God himself? Okay, so my, my question to you... That's, that's got nothing to do with science. Right, it's so a philosophical... It's a philosophical you, question, Because yeah. you bring in the philosophical claim yeah. that it was created from nothing yeah. uh, and that it's separate. So I'm examining that philosophy. We don't need science for this. We just need a philosophical discussion. Right, discussion. So, so let me tell you... Because I can give you a syllogism that I think explains it and as the benefit of Occam's okay. razor on my side. So I want you to so, respond okay, look, to that. We'll come to that in a second. But what I'm saying is, just generally speaking now, mm -hmm. there's two things you said, which I kind of already told you is not exactly how, how you thought they were. So you said that the universe was um, I, I was created uh, from nothing as the first creation by God. I said that, actually, that according to our narrative, that there were things prior to the universe that were created. Yeah? Okay, but that, that's beside the point. I mean, you're the first person who's ever told me that. No other Muslim has ever talked about okay, well, that. So can, maybe you're a lot more knowledgeable, that's fine. I can quote but that, that, that it's, sort not of, an issue. it's not an issue. Like, so cool, but that doesn't address the point. So let's put those aside. Because okay, you would agree that fine. he didn't create the universe from those things. So whether yeah, those no, things no, no. were created or not, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's say that in this world that we live in now, you need a material thing to create something from it. So if, for example, the, the phone that I'm holding or the, the camera that you're holding, it has been created from uh, X amount of materials, yeah? You, you would not think in your brain that those that camera or whatever it is has been created from uh, can be can be created from nothing by by nothing yeah so that's fine you can have that you can have that view what i'm saying is that if you take for granted that there is an entity outside of the universe that is all powerful all knowing and mm -hmm. has the ability or the creative capacity to do things which yeah, we'll do that in a second, inshallah. Oh, you need to pray. Okay, you can, we can do that. You can, you can hold that, inshallah. Yeah, can you see, well, sorry, I don't know why I was, I was just talking. Yeah. What, what I was saying is that, so the analogy is a false one, because you're comparing uh, apples and oranges. In this universe... I, I don't want us to talk about this universe. Forget about inside this universe. No, but you're, we you're, don't need to talk about inside this universe to address this claim. Let me tell you why, right? Because your claim is based on your experience in this universe. Your induction in this universe. You're saying that it must be the case that if God is going to create something from nothing, uh, he can't create something from nothing. You're basically saying that. No, that has to be from either from himself. That's what you said, isn't it? That, yeah, we're getting to the second part. Let's address the, the first part, which is the second part of the claim, which is that he created something that has nothing to do with himself. That's the only part. Let's, uh, yeah, okay. let's put aside the nothing bit, because even so what's, that is... What's the incoherence? What's the incoherence that? You claim that the stuff that he created the universe from was other than himself in its entirety. Yes. I'm saying to you, yes. he must be the source, because if he's all-powerful and he was all there was... Source meaning the, the, the doer. The, correct. Yeah, Not yeah. only the doer, okay. but the, from where, whence the material came. So I'm saying, why did you come to that conclusion? Because if he was all there was, yeah. that's a deductive argument. No, if he, so your, your, basically your conclusion has come yeah. from... Uh, you said that you actually made this point in the beginning of our conversation. You said that deduction and induction are intertwined, yeah? Because if you say, as, if I'm going to make a, sil a syllogism or a deductive argument, it's yes. got to be based on things that you've experienced in life, yeah? So your, your argument, which your, your premise actually is that everything that is created in this universe, because it has uh, material origins, 
that the same would have to apply in God's creation of the universe or anything else. I'm not talking about the materials per se, I'm talking about the philosophical argument. So let's not confuse the it. two. Okay, so from the stuff. Let, let me stuff means material, yeah? Correct. So okay. where does that so material... Talking about okay, so where does the material come from is my question to you, essentially. So, okay, so you're saying that where does that come from? I'm saying Correct. why does it have to come from anything? Well, if God is all there was, deductively, yes. it can only come from God. That's, it, no, no, that's, okay, so that's according to your that's according to your induction in this universe. A deduction, not induction. What, no, because your induction. Philosophically, you, you observe, how you observe through using empiricism, mm -hmm. you observe, okay, certain things happening in this universe and interacting in certain ways, and you're superimposing that narrative now on. God's creation of the universe. Tell me what's wrong with that. Okay, the, the problem with that, as I've mentioned before and I'll mention again, the problem with that is that you're assuming that all of the the laws outside of the universe are the same as the laws inside the universe. That's the first assumption. No, I'm not assuming the laws, I'm assuming it from a philosophical point of view. No, but you can't do that. Why not? Because is, is God illogical? No, no, what I'm saying, no, no, hold on. Okay. You've, got to, you've got to use a brain here, because what I'm saying is that in this universe, the way things work are not necessarily how you can guarantee them to work outside of this universe. And that's, that's non-philosophically, yeah? You can't say that the way things are working in this universe are the way they're going to work outside okay. this universe. So by, by your logic, yeah. I, I cannot assume that if God was all there was, then it must come from Him. I can't, I can't assume you can't, that. You can't assume, basically, that because uh, you can't assume that it has to be the case that the universe has to be from God. Because that's a Why not? assumption. Well, to me, that seems deducti deductive. Because you are saying your, it's, it's not. based on your experience in this world. But it's a deductive. If we think about no, it logically, all, the deductions all right. Come from deductions, right? Let me ask you this question: where, where did it come from, if not from God? Then, where did the stuff that God created this universe well, I'm, come I'm from? God created it. From what? Okay, so listen to me. Basically, our, our proposition, our proposition is this: mm -hmm. our proposition is that God, because of His infinite power and His infinite uh, knowledge and infinite wisdom, He is able to create something from nothing. That's my proposition. Now, I want you to try and disprove that right now. That's the second point. We, we can talk about no, that, but that's, that's the, the second thing. point. You, you, you're saying that it's impossible for that to be let, the case. Let me give I'm you... saying it is possible, and I want you to tell me how it's not possible. If you have an all-knowledgeable, all all-powerful creator who's all-wise, yeah, so he, I'm saying it's possible for that, for that creator to be able to create something from nothing. You're saying no, it's not possible, it has to be from himself. I'm saying that that's a false analogy based on your experience of this Okay, world. but you're confusing two different things. Uh, One is uh, the creation from universe, the other point is where did the stuff come from, if not from him? I'm saying so there's two points, the whole stuff you, you're argument, lumping the two the together, the let's make it one. The material thing that you said before, the material point that you made before, is once again, it's dependent upon your experience and inductions in this universe. That's all it is. And you, so can't you, make, you can't make an assumption that everything that's going to work outside this universe is going to work in the same way outside this universe. So it's a false analogy, unfortunately. No, you're not either not accepting my point and you're a smart guy. All right, let me give you a syllogism. You tell me what's wrong with the conclusion. Go ahead. Here's my four points. Okay. Premise one. Before the universe, God was all there was or everything that was. Would you agree with that? Let's go. Let me no. just see if you agree with it. So from, was God, our, from our narrative, we don't believe. So before the universe, there were things that we believed that were existent. Before the universe, God was all there was. No, no, we don't believe that. We believe that there were things that existed before the universe. Okay, so before the universe, there was God and whatever He created. Yes, that's more like. And it wasn't. There was no universe. There was no universe. Oh, at okay. that time. Before the universe, by definition, there's not. Thank a universe. you. Okay, right. so throwing the other stuff in, that's I'm not fine. sure that's helpful, but okay. So the first premise, I don't agree with, and you can't substantiate. It. So, shall I change so, it to make you happy? All right. No, I want to get to a premise that you're happy with. Otherwise, we're never going to get to the end. You can't build your house on false foundations. All right. So let me change the premise. So before the universe, God and whatever else he created was all there was. Before the universe? Yeah, by definition, yeah. So, okay. Make sure we're happy with that. Because so I'm the, tweaking okay, it slightly to include these other things by the way, that you're you coming up with. That that's fine. If that's a logical premise, then you accept God then. I'm, I'm playing in your, your worldview. So okay. I'm, I'm questioning right. your worldview to see whether so it's coherent. Before the universe, before the universe, before, before the universe, the universe doesn't exist. It's, no, what, it's no, no, literally no. what you're saying. Listen to me again. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Before you jump. Yeah. I, I'm doing it to make you happy because you're not accepting right. the way I'm I'm presenting. So you're saying that God before the universe. Go ahead. There was God, yeah. and there was whatever else you say except for the universe. Yeah, of course. Okay. Good. Of you're course. happy with that? Of course. My one basically said the same, except that you think that there's other things that were created by God. You have to play by our rules. You have to play by our rules. You're the only guy I've ever heard say that, but I'm not going to disprove. I, I don't know that. I've well, never okay, heard that from anybody else. Of the Quran, sort of color. If because we're not dealing with people that you've. you've um, 
that you've spoken to in, in, region, uh, in what you call it, Hyde Park. I'm mm -hmm. saying to you that if you go to chapter number 68 of the Quran, Surah Al-Qalam, and you look at the first verse, um, uh, the second verse, Noon wal qalami wa ma you'll find that the, the exegetes of that verse... Yeah, so it's not what the verse actually says, it's what people think the verse says. What do you mean? Because you said the exegesis. Noon is a letter of Arabic. Yeah. No one knows what that means, yeah? Nobody so the, knows. Yeah, so the Haruf the, 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 the broken letters in Arabic, no one knows what they actually mean. No one okay, knows. Okay, so, so why would we use that verse if no, nobody's we're not, sure? We're forgetting it. That's the oh, first okay. verse. That's the second verse. Right. Well, yeah. qalami wa By the pen and what they write, yeah? So if you look at the exegetes, what they say about this verse, some of them... By the pen and whatever they write. That's what the second verse says. So you say, by the yeah. pen mm -hmm. and what they write. So the angels, they write with the pen, yeah? Now this pen, some scholars of Islam say it was the first thing that was uh, created. Some scholars okay. say that it was the first thing. Some scholars say no, it wasn't the pen, but it was this. And some say it's not. So in other words, that, and that was created before the universe. Could we not just say that's allegorical? No. So you think that was physical? Yes. Okay, we're getting off the point a little bit, going to that no, thing. But it's just, I, I want to make sure things. that you're happy, because I can't, I can't proceed with my syllogism if you're not happy. If you disagree with the premise, we need to agree with the premise. No, okay. So I'm tweaking it slightly okay, so to accept your version of it. Your version that you're happy with is before the universe, God and the pen and the tablet or whatever else yep. was all there was and there was no universe. Pen, you tablet, happy? And whatever else he created, yeah. Except for the universe. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. God was there and all of his creations were there that he created, yeah. Okay, yeah. God created the universe, premise two. Yes. Yeah, people that. God is omnipotent. You don't believe he's omnipresent, do you? Or it depends what omnipresent means to you, I guess. Omnipresent in, in, in a physical sense. Omnipresent outside of the universe. So before the universe, he was all there was. No, are you saying that he's omnipresent in, a, in an actually physical sense, or that his, for example, all knowledge of what his knowledge surrounds? I'll go with that. I'll go with that. That's that's fine. So with in me. in a physical I'm, sense, we don't believe that. But okay. in a secondary sense, where well, his knowledge is, is basically so, uh, encompassing everything, of course, we believe that. Okay, so he's omnipotent. He's infinite and he's eternal. Infinite, eternal. Yeah, you're yeah. happy with that. That's premise three. Infinite, by the way, is not like one of the names of God. I'm not saying it's a name, but it's a property of God. So infinite in what capacity? In his knowledge? His knowledge, his Power? essence, his beingness. Because clearly the universe... What do you mean? Is, uh, you've got to define what you mean. Like that. So, so if you say he's infinite, because you've got, when you say he's on infinity, it's got to be used with a subject. So you said say infinitely knowledgeable, infinitely powerful. Yes, yeah, so I would agree with that. Has he got an essence? Has he got some kind yes. of a character that occupies, yes. Yes. let's call it a God space? I'm not going to say space, but I'm going to say that he has got an essence, yeah. Okay, so he's got I an essence, but that, that essence space. would be infinite. In other words, it would be everywhere at all times. No, I'm not saying that. I'm, uh, basically, okay. that's not what we believe in. No. You, you don't believe so that? So that would mean that he's omnipresent. So he's here right now. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's say he's outside of the universe. I'm quite happy to accept that he's outside the universe. Okay, fine. But the essence of him, his yes. essence, yeah. is everywhere outside the universe. It's not just in one place. Look, I mean, this, the thing is, you're, use, you're using, this is a really, really big problem, yeah, with uh, your premises here. You're using the word place outside of the universe uh, universe context yeah mm -hmm. so if you're using the word place outside the universe context it would have a different connotation we don't know what that means so if you say the word place in the universe we know what that means it's direction three-dimensional you go up down left right yeah outside of the universe that word place has different connotations now yeah? why, why would it not be in some way similar so we can't say that God, we, we are not allowed to say as muslims okay. that god has a space or that he, he occupies a space but We're his like essence occupies infinite space outside of the universe. I wouldn't even say that. I would just say... No, but why not? Is, is it so, so I wouldn't say that. I would say that God is transcendent, meaning that he's above and beyond his universe, but that he's not necessarily... I wouldn't say I wouldn't agree with the, the, the usage that he, he occupies a space. He, we don't believe that he occupies a space. Okay, you're reducing it down to an occupies a space. Yeah. I'm saying that his essence occupies all of whatever outside of the universe. Whatever there is outside the universe, that essence occupies all of it. No, 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 look, the, with this, I'll tell you the truth, yeah? As Muslims, we are only allowed to stick with the textual evidences, yeah? I agree with that, but so, if we... So your, your phraseologies here are not in line with, number one, what the Quran is necessarily saying, and number two, what the scholars of Islam have ever said. So, from either of the schools and, uh, who claim to be Sunni uh, Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, I say to you that, let's, let's stop at the point where you said that God is... Uh, all knowing, all hearing, and that he was with his creation uh, uh, outside the universe, and otherwise he created things outside the universe, uh, and that he created the universe. That's your second premise. This whole thing of om omnip uh, omnipresence. 
So if you say that God with, God is knowledgeable everywhere, that's fine. We accept that God's knowledge is, is everywhere. But if you say that He Himself is everywhere, that's not what we okay, accept. Okay, but how can His knowledge just, be everywhere if His essence isn't? How, why is that? Why is that? Uh, why is that a contradiction? No, well, I'm asking why? Why? Why do you not include essence then? Because that's not what, from the Quranic narrative mm -hmm. and from the Sunnah okay. narrative, that's not what's been included. That's okay, not but if we just is. look at it from a philosophical point, no, 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 you okay. don't want to. No, no, that's not so where the Quran and, and philosophy no, collide, then you you just go with the Quran. Well, the way it works okay. is no, no. The way it works is basically I explained this to um, people before. I think it was Andy, other people like uh, atheists and stuff like that. Yeah, we say that there are only certain things. I accepted that there are only certain things. I agree, actually. There are only certain things that can be logically deducted about God. Uh, about God. So you can you can you can deduce that God is all uh, knowing. You can you can deduce that God is is the is the start of the universe. But there are some attributes and characteristics of God that human beings that have no reason or right to speculate about. One of them is that. Uh, so these are the attributes we get them directly from the text from the Quran. For you to believe, there, there is an objective. There is an objective reality in this. So if you believe that the Quran is the word of God, then you'll accept what God says about Himself. You don't need to be guessing because everyone will have their own idea of what God is unless we yeah, but you guys are doing that anyway not just about God no, what I'm saying is that we believe that God is revealed the Quran so he tells us about himself. Yeah, but you're interpreting it so that that whole thing of you just have to believe the Quran is not seems to me not entirely what everybody else does so you interpret verses yeah. like you've interpreted the seven heavens to mean seven universes so there's an interpretation. So, yeah, look, the Quran is not straightforward in the sense like you read a verse and you accept exactly what the verse says. Uh, no, I You've got to interpret the, the, it. These verses which are talking about God's essence are straightforward. Right. Are straightforward. Yeah, so some things are straightforward, some aren't. Absolutely. Right. That's okay. exactly what the Quran says. And, and who yeah. makes the decision about who, which are straightforward and which aren't? Is that the scholars? Yes, so the scholars okay. of Islam, they'll tell you what a verse is, is either ambiguous or is not ambiguous, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. And they're obviously making that determination in some form. Which it's based on language. Presumably, presumably you language agree with. can have more than like sometimes a, a word can have four or five different meanings. And sometimes uh, or a phrase a phrase can have more than one meaning, like five different meanings. Or something can have one meaning. I'll tell you what. Okay, let me let me do this once more. And I think then because otherwise it's going to run on quite a while. Yeah. But I'd love to Should get start, your. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good okay, with this. Right. I'll just read the four things as we've got. Go on. And I'd love you to come back if you can with one that as, as, that oh, yeah. explains it to me in a different way. So let me give it to you again and then just for the camera because we didn't get to number four. So before the universe, God and whatever else was all there was. Yes. God created the universe. Yes. God is omnipotent, infinite and eternal. Infinite and in, in, we said they have to you have to attach that to an object. Infinitely infinitely knowledgeable, infinitely. His well. essence to me seems to be infinite as well. We wouldn't I mean look You might disagree with that. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that, I'm not agreeing with that. I'm saying that we basically when it comes to attributes of God we can only we can only follow what God has told us is, is basically yeah, but what I'm asking for you to do is so to I'm saying it's infinitely knowledgeable that's, that's infinitely powerful yes okay so yeah um, therefore God created the universe from God's self or essence God's essence that's my four syllogism okay then my, my three uh, premises okay, and a syllogism think, uh, case, what I'd love for you is to okay, come so, with one so, yeah. that counters that so that I can examine All yours because right. so at the moment God, I think we've got a, okay, so an uh, impasse do you to mind some if degree. I say something Rob you, go ahead because I feel like being blunt with you because of your you know why not of course there go is, for it look I feel like you don't know how deductions work go ahead let me tell you let me tell the camera how deductions work right let me give you a very simple deduction right if a deduction is that the premises so the, the original premise and the conclusion basically have to link to each other so if I say to you look I'm aware of that yeah. if I say to you all, all men are mortal if I say all men are mortal okay all men are mortal. mortal. Yeah. Socrates. Socrates, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, Socrates is a, is a man. Yeah. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. That's a very straightforward example that has been used in all the textbooks of logic. What I'm saying to you is that's good. That what I'm saying to you is that the the the, pro, the premise and the conclusion they link to each other. I'm aware of that. What you've just done is you've made four separate claims which have I've made to do. three premises and a conclusion. Okay, you can't make the, that's not the way it works. So you have one premise and then the conclusion links with it. So you need to be informed of how to use deduction. Because you're not using it properly. And, so and if I make what, three premises and I make a conclusion that's in your no, world you make one not correct. Premise, you have a premise and then you have a secondary premise that comes from that first premise. It has to lead from that first premise. And then you you can have up to five or six guys, up to whatever you want. But your conclusion has to naturally follow from those. Correct. You can't say that, okay, God, uh, I don't see the link at all between your third uh, premise uh, or your third point and your fourth point. Dead, yeah? That's cool, that's cool. You just do it with yours. 
Yeah, yeah and I've got it on here anyway. Yeah, that's what, do you know what? You just uh, download it on your one. I'll just take it from your website. Continue, continue. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Is that right? I'll give you permission. Thanks, man. All right. That's good. It's on you camera. Want, so I've got it here. And I'll give you, you can take it from mine as well if you want. Up okay. to you. I'll put this up unedited from the time we started till right, we finish basically. So what I'm, okay, just, to, just to sort of, so what you've just said there was you've listed three or four different things. Yeah. They don't work in that, unfortunately they don't work in that deductive way that you, 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 pr you propose that they do work. So you've misused logic. You, you, you just basically made four different uh, statements without knowing one of them sometimes doesn't even have a connection with that, uh, question number two. Where's the connection between the fact that God created the universe and the fact that... Hey, what's your third point? There we Remember? go. Have a, have a read. so that so, It's so, easier to see if you okay, see it. Yep. Look, God is omnipotent, om omnipresent. Uh, we said om omnipresent, I didn't accept. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, I'll take that out just for you. Uh, uh, infinite. We said that it has to be put with an object and eternal. I said once again, it has to be put with an object. Therefore, God created the universe from, uh, from God's self, from himself. Sorry. So he said, therefore, God created the universe from himself. So where is the link between three and four? Can you explain to me what the link between three and four is? Okay, so um, why does, does, why does the, it follow? Okay, so well, it follows from all of them. If you put all of them together, are you saying that if you put all premises together, yeah, you you, ca you can't have a is it okay? So what you've got to what I'm yeah, yeah. hoping you will do is tell me where the error is, yeah. not not no, no, not no, the form of the error, but where's the content error in in this? All right, so if we go back to our uh, Socrates example, yeah, Socrates, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. The connection is clear, yeah? That all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, okay? So therefore, the first category and the second category, there is a similarity between those two categories. Therefore, uh, Socrates is mortal. The deduction follows perfectly, you see? Your third, your, your third point and your fourth point have no connection whatsoever. God is, uh, you, you say eternal, this and that, whatever you say. Therefore, God must have created the universe for himself. Where is the connection? Why is it therefore? I don't think you're using that correctly whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense. Why is it therefore? Oh. You have to explain to me and the rest of the people here. Why is it, why is it there? Why does it follow? Because so, God is, uh, the, actually, actually I think that it's a contradiction. Because if you're saying God is, if you accept, because mm -hmm. in your third premise you actually accept, he actually accepted. He accepted that God is all powerful or something like that. Or infinitely powerful, yeah? Because yeah? you said infinite could be used to power and to knowledge. If you accept that God is infinitely powerful and infinitely knowledgeable, then you should be able to accept that God can create, it's a possibility that God can create the universe from nothing, from nothingness. If you're saying no, then the question is why are you calling him all powerful in the first place then? Because I'm using your worldview and I'm, I'm interrogating to see does this make sense? Is this Yeah, I'm coherent? telling you it, does make, it makes perfect sense. But, but, but you, you haven't supported it, I guess that's my thing and I'm so, trying to give so, okay. so if you an take easier for, way. What you've done here, you've taken for granted that God is actually... So let's say for example, if we take for granted that God is all powerful, yeah? Yeah. That he has power over all things. Yeah. That he's all knowledgeable. I'm saying such an entity, is it not possible for such an entity to create something from nothing? Is it not possible? I, I don't think that it is. It seems incoherent to me. It seems. Here's so now why. you're using uncertain terms because before you were using certain terms. So interesting. What I'm saying is that is it, is it really a, di a dichotomous answer? It's either yes or no. So either if you have an entity here that's all knowing, all hearing, uh, you know, all powerful, is it possible for such an entity to create something for, from nothing? Okay, so let me ask you a question just to make sure I'm, cl no, I'm wait, clear. I, I want to get your answer first if you don't Well, mind. I need to in order to, yeah, to get clarity. Right, fine, fine, fine. Was there nothingness at the same time as God? Because obviously you're saying... That, that would make it... That is, that is a contradiction in okay. terms. Okay, so yeah. at some... There was there was God and then at some point there was a bit of nothingness that he created the universe from. Would that so be fair what, to what say? what are you trying to say? So, so you see, if there's nothingness and God at the same time, that's a Because you, you agree... Terms, yeah? You say to me that nothingness is the absence of everything, including God... I didn't say that, but that's your definition. I don't mind. All I'm saying is that, for example... Is that okay? What I'm going to say to you is as follows. If you say, how could... God, uh, I, we said that God created the universe from nothing yeah yes so god was there so obviously if you're saying that how could it be that nothingness and god can, uh, can exist at the same time i'm saying that it's not what we're saying that nothingness and god was there at the same time we're saying that in instead of using materials as we would have to in the, in the context of our worldly sphere that the universe to create something god had the capacity the ability and he did create the universe yeah without such material and i'm saying what is the contradiction in believing that god is all-powerful all-knowing and that he could do that, and he did do that, and the, the fact that the universe didn't come from God himself. What's the contradiction in it? To, to me, that's incoherent. Okay, to you, that's what's wrong. So sub subjectivism yeah. is coming along. I'm not I'm happy with that. So uh, now we've moved away from your deductive analogy. Or I, don't, I don't think so. No, you have. Because the, but, but the whole point of a deduction is that it attempts to, uh, it attempts to uh, create objective reality. So now you're saying it seems, you've used the word seem, to me, 
these are all subjective terms. You can't use subjective terms to come to objective conclusions. So now you've said... Okay, do you want to speak to me or are you going to lecture the audience? So I'm just looking at the camera. Okay, well, well speak uh, to I me. Don't, I apologise. Okay. I, yeah. I hope you're not offended by that. But no, I'm, I'm just saying I that. should choose yeah. not to be offended. It's okay. a choice. No we, problem. We can, Okay. Anyways, do you see the problem? Explain to me how this is possible, because you're making an ontological claim. I want the epistemology. How, do, how does this happen? I can give you an epistemological, as I have done. I can give you an explanation. I want the explanation of how God can create something from nothing, and also that this something is separate from God. That's the epistemology that I'm looking for from you. I've given you mine, which you kind of don't accept, but the epistemology, even if I change the premises, it would make sense if, if that's okay. your... Your argument is not that the content is incorrect. You're saying the premises from a validity point of view is incorrect. There's two different things, isn't there? One is the validity. Okay. The other is the content you've of used, the... You've used two words in, incorrectly now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to ask you what you think they mean. So what do you think epistemology means? And so we'll... how does something happen? So okay, no, inquiry... no. Epistemology is the theory of knowledge. Ontology is the theory of being. Of right? what, yes. All right, so, the what and the how. So I don't see where... Epistemology really has anything to do with what we're talking about. We're talking about each premises, yeah? You, you've given me one premise, the second premise, the third premise, the fourth. I'm saying that the third one doesn't link with the fourth. It has no relationship with it whatsoever. It's like saying, let me, let me, give, you a, let me give you a false... Uh, a, basically, it's a perfect example of how not to do logic. Can you repeat what the third one is again? He said that because God is all, is infinitely powerful, etc., infinitely knowledgeable, that must mean that the universe came from himself. Why does it mean that? It no, I'm taking all three together. And by the way, I'm happy... No, but the third one has to directly link to the fourth one. Alright, so I'm happy to change the premises around yeah, and I will still come to the same conclusion. Okay, then do that then. You have, you have, to, prepare, right. you have to prepare that and then you come... You can't just say I'm happy to do this and then not have anything to present. Well, I'll do it for you now. Do you want me to? I don't mind. Go ahead, man. Okay. But so, just be aware that you're doing that. Because if you change your premises, that's an admission that the previous premises were incorrect or incoherent. So you're admitting that then? No. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You weren't accepting it. Well, so he's trying another argument. Yes, no, I'm exactly. I'm not accepting it, but if it was a logical argument with deductive capacity to come to an objective reality or truth, then it shouldn't have been that I can't accept it. He should have been able to hammer on and say, look, actually, you're wrong, and this does follow from that. And what if objectivity doesn't exist? And by the way, please don't put me on camera. No, I'm filming that's him. That's cool, that's cool. Okay. Hang on a sec, let me finish and then you can take yeah, over. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to just change it for you, because no to problem. me it makes sense, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to be very charitable and say that I've got it wrong, and I'm going to accept the, your, your criticism, okay? No so I'll change it around. Okay. So before the universe, God was all there was, and he was omnipotent, so infinite, and don't, eternal. We don't believe that. I believe that there was something about an okay, you, you believe that? So no, no, but you're, you're can, playing, can along, you, can you're you playing along with my narrative. Can you be charitable and grant me that? No. Sorry. Okay, does it make a difference? No, okay, I'm, I'm the reason I'm, no, I'm the reason if, I'm, you're, if, you're, if your assumption is Muhammad, that you're playing by the Islamic narrative, you have, to, you have to play by it properly. Do you see what I mean? Does it make... Okay, so here's a way to, to see whether you're being charitable or not. Does it I don't make want it, to be charitable. <laughs> you don't want to be charitable. No, so you I, don't want I, to have I, a... a, a tr truth is truth, isn't it? Like, yeah, I, can't, but when we, I can't change the truth to be charitable. I'd love to be charitable to you. I you're a nice be, guy, but... I could be I uncharitable can't. when you have an argument. I want to give you the benefit of the doubt and see whether it plays out. No, but I just want the truth to prevail, though. So I, I, okay. can't, I can't be charitable... Muhammad, does it make a difference... Truth, so, so you can be happy. Does it make a difference to the argument whether he created this pen and this tablet yeah. as to whether he created the universe doesn't make any difference no, but at if all. You, if you make a premise, it has to be a, a, a true premise according to... Because if you're saying... Because you don't believe in God, right? So if you don't believe in I'm God... Going, I'm stepping into your worldview yeah. and say, does what you so, say to right, me so make if, sense? If you step into my worldview, you have to take it with its fullness. You can't take it in its partial reality. You have to take it in its fullness. I'm saying that we don't believe that the universe was the first thing that God created. All right, give me the things that he created. Just give me a couple of them and I'll include them to make you happy. It makes no difference right, in my so world. a couple of them. The uh, pen and the tablet. Are you happy with that? The, the pen, the, t uh, the tablet, the arsh, which is the, the throne. Yeah. Is that good enough? Okay. Some of, the, some of the things, yeah. Some of the things. Before the universe, God was, what God was all there was, plus the tablet, the pen and the arsh. Are you happy with that? And others. Uh, maybe and others. Are you happy with that? The angels and so on. Angels and so on. Oh, so many things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, that, but they're all, they're all a part of God, aren't they? Yeah. In some not sense. A part, not part of God. Not yeah. a part not, of God. No. This, is, this is a... Yeah, separate of God that separate existed God, yeah. before yeah, the yeah. Yeah, which is what I dispute, yeah, yeah. but okay. anyway. And part of that same premise to make you happy no is that he's omnipotent, infinite, and eternal in whatever way no, no, you want you to accept that. It. We said that eternal has to be attached to a subject. So if you say he's eternally, eternally knowledgeable, or he's infinitely knowledgeable, you see what I mean? Eternal by itself is not one of the attributes. Of, we don't. Be, that's not even a name. In that. We can't say that. So, so we have to say eternally what? Eternally what? Eternally knowledgeable, and it and his infinite and his essence is eternal. Pardon? It's El Mudim. He's eternally existing. Right? Yeah, no, no, El Hay is even there, right? El Hay, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. But eternal existing is fine, because now you're putting the word existing in there, so it'll make sense, yeah. But eternal, 
eternality, I guess. That's not even a word, but being eternal. Eternal in a, in a life sense? Yeah, makes sense. Perfect. Let's, let's yeah, go with that, sure. yeah. Should we try again? Yes, sir. Okay. In terms of time. So before the universe, God plus the pen plus the tablet plus the other things was all there was. And, and uh, he's omnipotent, eternal, infinite. Uh, infinite and you'd have to infinite, infinitely knowledgeable, infinitely powerful. Yeah, but if you say infinite, that's you can't just say use an abstract term without subject, uh, without attaching it to an object. His knowledge and his essence is infinite and eternal. Yes, great. Premise two: God created the universe. Therefore, God created the universe from God's self. Why does why does that link to that? Right. Because God plus these other things was all there was. There was no universe. Correct. So, okay. So you're you're okay. Your pre you, your presupposition is that an eternal, uh, in your words, but obviously not, we have a different terminology. Mm -hmm. This God that we've described yes. cannot possibly create the universe from uh, from without these stuff or these materials. That's your proposition. That's your pre uh, supposition. My premise, my conclusion is that in some way it came from God as source. So you're saying that it's not possible for it to be anything other than that. I'm saying it's incoherent for it, and if you why want to make it coherent, why, you why give me it, an explanation why? as to how that can happen. No, I'm giving you an explanation. So, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. One to one. You're filming. I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah. Advertising on Google. Uh, go on YouTube, my channel. How yeah, yeah. Much, uh, how much can I understand creation? Pardon? How much can you jump up your body and to understand creation as a whole? What's I don't, the I don't get the question. That you understood it right now. Can you be the tree? I can't build a, build a tree now. Alright, just, just to finish, just to finish. But you can have the conversation <laughs> further, yeah. so I can finish the video. The All I want... God should be one Let it it you can take over in a moment. Yeah, ask, it ask him what he understands. It's 1% of the creation. Right? Okay, yeah, I get you, okay. So, so you might, might be 5%, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah, I get your point, yeah. So 100% yeah. will be like minds of the God, yeah? Okay. Which is not God. Oh, yeah, so you're saying we're all limited. I agree with that. That's a good point. No, it's a good point, yeah. There are many gods. Okay, yeah. If each and every one are in this to each other, you understand me? No, you're right. You're a good point, yeah. There's a many gods, you say. You want to step in? You want to step in, sir? They say many gods. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I don't agree with that. There's no many gods. I didn't hear what you said. I didn't hear what you said. Go on. Sorry. Go on. The father. I think they have the. Yeah, we're having this discussion. Go on, bro. All right, so just to finish off with, I think we're going to disagree, but what I'd love you to do on the camera is just to give your conclusion as to why you disagree with those two premises now, change to two premises, not conclusion, and if you disagree, what is your explanation? Okay, so once again, I, I hate to say it so crudely, but I think that you have misused the principles of logic to come to a false conclusion, and I basically, I think an atheist would agree with me. If they really know, if, if, an, if an honest atheist knows logic and they listen to your premises, from one to four, or your, your points, they'll say it doesn't follow and you shouldn't have made that argument. I disagree. That, okay, that's your point, no problem. We shouldn't talk, you understand? <laughs> that's point one. Point two, point two, as what I was going to say, was if you think about genuinely, if you think about it genuinely, my question to you would be, yeah, is your only issue with the entity that we call the creator, Allah, or whatever you want to call it, uh, Allah, that it makes no sense in your mind that he created the universe from nothing. Is that your only issue? No, no. It's what? the secondary thing, which is this this universe that he created. Yeah. You say is totally separate from him, and he couldn't have been the source. What's the problem? What's the problem with that? I've, I've, I've no, just... When you say the source, he was the source, not in the sense that things came from him. How can he not be the material source? You, you. I'm sure you're okay, aware material of material source. Once again, so this is the problem. You, you go, you fall into the, the the fallacy of a false analogy when you say this, because you're saying material source. The only way. You can come to a conclusion as to the fact that God needs materials to, it's necessary for God to have materials in order to, uh, to basically create a universe, is by in, in, in making an induction in this realm that you live in, using your own experiences and five senses, and then coming to the conclusion. I disagree, and here's why. Well, that's, there's, there's, there's well no other unless, way. unless you assume that. There's no other way. Okay, so this universe, is this, is this made of material? This entire universe. It's more than it's physical. Material. It's physical. Yeah, yeah it's, it's more, but it's made of material. Yeah. Let's call it atoms for one, for one of a better. Our feelings part of the universe. Pardon? Feelings. So the stuff that the universe is made of. Let's call it atoms. Atoms. Yeah, it goes even go deeper now. There's quarks and this whatever. Stuff. Whatever you. But but that is that's we'll call that material, isn't it? Well, there's a particle of God at, at the end. Down there, which they didn't found it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so,